Revolution on Diaspora Matters. For this, I would like to invite CJ Singh and Renuka Salwan. CJ Singh is a veteran public relations expert with nearly four decades of experience. He is the National Senior Vice President of the Public Relations Council of India, an advisor on strategic communication, and an adjunct professor at Shulani University. Renuka Salwan is public relations and communication professional with nearly four decades of experience, former director of public relations of the Bureau of Indian Standards and Punjab University, recipient of the Chanakya Award for Excellence in Public Relations and many other awards in the profession of PR. Very warm good morning to everyone here and especially the youngsters who are here because as we all know this session is on communication and communication I must say and we all will agree that it is the lifeline of everything in our life, in our day to day life, in our communication, in professional life and whatever we are doing communication is the essence of everything what we do. So friends uh, as a, we have already been introduced and I am pleased to have Charanjit Singh here who is a public relation and communication professional with us today and uh, we are very well aware that the Sikh diaspora all over the globe is doing wonderful job uh, when we talk about the community services and uh, the other, uh, you know, taking the legacy of the art, culture and heritage to the youngsters, to the next generation. So we all know that it's really doing wonderful job all over the world. And this panel here, this Sikh festival here in India uh, by Sikh Lens is a testimony to that, that we are going ahead, we are becoming aware and we are communicating, we are taking the work being carried out by the Sikh diaspora all over the globe to the youngsters, to the next generation and we just had a wonderful discussion by Karen who really highlighted how she br brought the legacy of her family to the next generation. So it will stay on in the records in form of her book. So today, as a communication expert, I would like to first and foremost, uh, before we start, I would also uh, bring the, I want the youth to please be attentive. So because tomorrow you're going out and communicating and how important the communication is for your day to day life and also to interact to find out that what best can be done further. So we'll have some interaction later on. First, few questions with uh, Mr. Charanjit. Uh, Mr. Charanjit, first of all, I would like to know that uh, we communicate for everything, whatever we do. It is very important. If we don't communicate, the work will not be, you know, told to the world. And the sixth diaspora is doing a wonderful job. But then, uh, how important is the timely, accurate and relevant information which goes out to the public and how the media perceives what these people are doing for the society. So just throw some light on that. You know, communication is uh, when you are representing, uh, when we get into the corporate, uh, one of the first thing which we tell uh, uh, the CEOs and the proprietors or the representative of an organization that what do you stand for? Who you are? I think these are the questions which uh, we as Sikhs or Punjabis living abroad need to ask ourselves. It is unfortunate when we see the videos uh, of the Sikh youth or the, uh, or the attacks on the Sikh youth or attacks on Sikhs or uh, you know different stories which we hear is it of our own making or it is uh, truly a discrimination i think there are lots of uh, all sorts of people around the globe and what we need to look into it is that what was 
that Guru Nanak taught us. What are the basic ethos of our being? A Sikh is a way of life. It is it is not being, uh, you know, with a flowing beard, unfortunately, I'm sorry for that, uh, uh, friends, but then when Guru Nanak perceived it as a peer of the world, he talked of the universalism, the universal brotherhood, the oneness of humankind, the oneness to be in touch and intrinsically inside us, we discover as to who we are as one human being all across the globe. Are we carrying that ethos forward, those values? Are we representing ourselves from the external and material representations, forgetting our own value systems? Are we carrying on those values of oneness, of humanity, of human, of universal brotherhood? Are we thinking about that? And if Karen is proud of today, you know, of writing about a family in a different land, I believe that there are the values which she has found that uh, even her elders and the parents and the grandparents were able to survive in a different environment just because of the values they had held in their mind. And, and as a Sikh, not Sikh as how one looks at it, the Sikh as the seeker, the basic concept of Guru Nanak was that somebody who seeks, who is always a learner, to get in touch with one's own self, to realize the reality of his being, that is the essence which we are losing on the way somewhere you now. And that is the reason that what we are trying to project ourselves, uh, that is somewhere that there, is a, there is a disconnect. And as I was saying that uh, in, in, uh, in, in the corporate sector, the first thing when we uh, teach the CEO of an organization is to become an ambassador of his organization. And that is the corporate culture which we try to propagate in, the, in, in their employees, in their staff, so that, you know, that uh, one unified value system gets reflected in their action, whatever they do, whatever they say. And that is how the organizations outside or the people outside will, you know, identify that corporate branding from the values which one represents. And as six, we have to be ambassadors of our own ethos and the value systems. And especially when we go abroad. And that is why they have integrated themselves all across the globe just because of those value systems. My father had also migrated to Africa in Kenya when he was just a child. And the stories which he brought and trying to pen down together and uh, as Karen very rightly said okay, that each one of you has to look for those stories. You know, they are, as you rightly said, they are sitting right there in your homes. He served in the British Army, he went to <coughs> Singapore, traveled different countries and representing the British Army at that time, who respected the Sikhs very much. And some of the things which the Britishers also respected was their commitment, their values, and their discipline. Those were the things which they valued and that is why they respected them. And I believe that as we go out into the other worlds, into the other cultural milieu, we need to learn to respect them. Are we loving? Are we open? Are we respecting them for who they are? Or we are just trying to project ourselves that being a Sikh, 
I can do anything. I think unfortunately I've uh, been to Australia, been to Netherlands, seen uh, in uh, other European countries. Unfortunately, our youth does not respect that. And that is the reason of whatever the issues which are being faced by them in different cultural media. So uh, that needs to be respected. Yeah, yes, Mr. Charanjit, well said. Uh, here I want to add on that uh, whatever work they are doing, even, even if the youth are not on the right track and uh, how the media perceives them, how we want media to you know, conceive what they have to offer to the community. That is, that is very important because this is through media, the communication will spread across. So that is important. Yeah, very significant. In fact, uh, many of the Sikhs and especially through the Gurdwaras, uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, serving the community. And that again is an ethos which has been built into our psyche because uh, Gurdwaras represent that universality. Yeah. That anybody and everybody can walk in and share a meal. It's not about eating. That anyone who is hungry, cannot afford it, can go there and eat without being questioned. So, uh, in, in so far as the media is concerned, that is a, an unfortunate uh, a situation because the media deals with uh, diverse culture yeah. and you need to understand that not everybody or every reporter is trained to report any activity. Even in the corporate sector you find that. Why do you do the press releases and send their FAQs and the background notes? Why? It is because you want them to be informed about an organization. How many times we uh, are doing that uh, abroad and uh, reaching out to the media to explain it to them uh, as yeah. to the kind of work which we are doing. Yeah. And, and there is, a, of course, uh, there are uh, in the media, as Rupindaji would uh, also will uh, endorse it, there used to be um, a key document in every newspaper, what we called as the uh, style sheet. <coughs> and there was yeses and noes, what you can use, the kind of terminology you can use, and the terminology or in representing a particular minority or a community is to be used, how they need to be addressed, and how not to do it. Unfortunately, with the development of the social media and so many diverse yes. channels, uh, those style sheets are forgotten. Nobody is taking care of, so whatever comes to your mind as an individual, you report it. And that is where the role of every Sikh or every Punjabi who is living abroad must reach out to the media channels and educate them, create awareness. But this is not all. I think more than anything else, we are talking about the communication. It is, it is again, who you are. Are you the ambassador of your community? If you are, then how do you behave? Living in a strange community, that will define you. And that will create the perception in the minds of the people. Not because what you say or whatever you are writing or reaching out to them, that this is the way sh we should be written about. But the way you behave, that is more of a communication, which is your body language, the way you represent yourself, the way you behave in the public places. All that adds up to your representation of your community. And that's very, very essential of Prof. Yes. Yes, very well said, uh, Mr. Charanji. We all know that uh, how important it is to be the ambassador. We know about the rights, but we don't know about the duties. Each one of us, as a member of a society, as a member of a community, we also owe some responsibility to the society and how uh, we communicate with our community and whether we really 
are the ambassador of that community what we are representing that is very important so it has to come from each one of us the responsibility lies on each one of us to project and to uh, you know trans transmit that information to the society but uh, in today's scenario the social media has taken place over uh, the print or the other medias it is very important and each person is the editor of their own information which they are carrying in their hearts and they are able to transmit it immediately with within no time to the outside world through the various social medias so uh, uh, what next i want to know is that uh, how through this media uh, the new media which has come up uh, what impact the cultural political geographical uh, impact has on uh, these communications very very relevant uh, in fact and uh, those of you who are uh, in touch with the new technology which is coming up like artificial intelligence yeah. and perhaps in the last uh, few months people have become used to chat gpt yes if you have heard about it ai is doing uh, wonders and uh, you know one of the and at the same time the algorithms if you understand how the google works and how the internet uh, world uh, communicates you know one of the things uh, which we need to learn now with the new media coming up and in fact uh, there is a big question for everybody for the youngsters and every professional are we useful reflect upon this yes are you useful to your family your community your profession this world are you useful because social media has given us the handle that each one of us is posting what i am eating i am driving this car yes you know i am enjoying myself somewhere sitting in a restaurant all those photos i must share it with you come under the you know algorithm model as useless <laughs> if you are talking about your community that i am the best and the only one this is the way we do it this is what i want to do it google's algorithms have changed and they have started uh, putting at the back end such content which will not get visible to many yes yeah. remember that they want the content which can help somebody which is meaningful to somebody I'm driving this car, and X, Y, Z are its features, and this is wow! It is, I mean, the best. Or how it is helping? I represent this community, and this is how it is helping the people. Those stories are not going out. We are talking about ourselves, not about others. How we are benefiting other people? The social media is a big game changer. if you are writing a a piece of content and putting it on the internet the algorithm will identify it whether it is useful to somebody or not it will automatically well you know take it away and uh, maybe put it in a dustbin somewhere it may not get discovered the more you write about others how sick or punjabis are helping other people how they have you know integrated into different cultures how they are doing well and supporting the communities and the humanity in fact it's not about i it's about you yes it's about other people the social media has changed the game so, so we need to learn and yes. uh, 
take care of uh, whatever content we put out on the social media. Yes, uh, very well said. And here, something which is coming to my mind. I think uh, we all are using Facebook. I am uh, talking to Karen, and I don't have her number. I don't have. I am not with her on Facebook. But then I uh, immediately see on the Facebook, you may know this person. So how this is how artificial intelligence is working. It's like your eyes, your heartbeat, your thought process. I think everything is being controlled by the artificial intelligence. So we have to be very particular. What strategies can be adopted for a maximum benefit of the communication which uh, here we are talking about the sick lens and about other NGOs, what they are doing for the society. It's a, it's a magnanimous work which is being carried out by various people. But then how and uh, what measures can be taken so that it is projected by them also. They also know that, that yes, this way they can do it in a better way. Uh, how that communication can impact uh, their work. Definitely, as uh, I said, I think uh, everything has been said uh, about this. It is about ourselves, who we are inside. I think this is what we need to learn. And uh, we need to reflect upon it. And actually, you know, in our communication, communication is not what you write and uh, say okay, that this is the way it has to be said and uh, here's my press release and publish it. It is uh, about, uh, you know, your consonance with yourself. You have to be in consonance. Uh, you know, I, I remember Mahatma Gandhi was speaking in London to a congregation and uh, he spoke at length for two hours and one uh, British lady came up to him and she, she asked him that you never uh, refer to any notes. You have been speaking for two hours and, uh, you know, how come that you could get this gift of gab or, you know, you could do so well? So his answer was okay, that uh, I don't have to because uh, what I think is what I say. What is my true being? I'm in consciousness, my heart, soul and my mind. Yes. It is in consonance. If you are representing goodness, if you are intrinsically feeling that the humankind is one, we are living in one world. Every human being has the same traits, the same qualities that I have. If I feel from inside as to who I am as a Sikh or as a Punjabi or as a person living in this cultural setup, in this part of the world, so whatever my appearances being, it does not matter because even I remember I traveled to Nigeria and there was a uh, actually a delegation from Kenya and the first thing they said was oh Kala Singha <laughs> and that's with the deep respect they do it those uh, Africans because they have interacted with uh, one Mr. Kala Singha who had migrated uh, from Punjab long time back and he worked with them and created the value systems and he integrated himself with that community that they respected him and they always every Sardar they see okay Kala Singha so I mean this is what uh, it is all about be yourself and then the world will be yours. Thank you. Thank you so much Mr. Charanji and very well said. Uh, it is very important to communicate in the format, in the language, on the time, on the accuracy keeping in mind and how you project that the work which you are doing. I think that will go a long way in communicating your good deeds to the society and carry on the legacy 
and uh, i congratulate siklens for doing so yeah, and uh, yes uh, they are doing a wonderful job and even communicating with the outer world that's wonderful thank you so much mr charanjit and thank, thank you. you so much everyone thank you so much Thank you so much for this lovely session. We are truly delighted to have your presence today at the cultural and literary symposium.